Hey friends, welcome to the cabin. I'm Jackie and my goal is to teach you vintage skills from days gone by that you can use today. This video is in collaboration with Mary of Mary's Nest and Heidi of Rain Country Homestead where we're preparing a meal from our food storage pantry. So let me gather my supplies and I'll be right back with you and we'll get started. When we think of a food storage pantry, we normally think of rice and beans, and one of my favorite meals to cook is good old-fashioned southern lima beans and ham, and that's what we're doing today. And we're going to start with a heavy bottom Dutch oven. You can do this in a crock pot if you prefer, but I love to cook mine in a Dutch oven. And we're going to start with three cups of our dried beans that I have rinsed. Now. If you prefer, you can actually put these in water and set them in the refrigerator overnight, cover them where there are a couple of inches, uh, where the water comes a couple of inches above them in the bowl, and you can set them in the refrigerator, and that will, um, that will help to soften them up and will shorten your cooking time. But I'm going to be here where I can just uh, tend to them as I'm doing other things and make sure that the water stays at a good level and I'm good to go. So I've got my rinse beans in here. And I wanted to show you this. This is going to be my seasoning ham. This is ham that I canned over the summer from a hog that we actually raised here on the place. And this is actually some ham bone broth from that same hog that I uh, canned at the same time. So it was a busy canning time here during the summer when the hogs were slaughtered. So what we want with our three cups of lima beans is we want somewhere around six to seven cups of liquid. So we're going to go ahead and put these ham chunks in there, and that's going to be the ham chunks and somewhere around a cup and a half of liquid, maybe two cups out of the quart jar. Now we're going to open this. Oh, this smells wonderful already. This is my ham bone broth. I'm going to go ahead and get this fired up and we want to bring it to a bowl a boil and then we will lower it down to a simmer and just let it cook now I'll, you can add any seasonings to this that you like whatever you prefer since the ham is already pretty salty I'm not going to add any salt right now I will taste it as it cooks and see if it needs an addition of salt later on but to start with we're not going to add any salt we'll just test it later but I am going to add about a teaspoon of black pepper and a pinch of garlic and that's just to taste whatever you like this is something that you can uh, kind of customize as you go along. Some people actually add a cut up onion. Uh, it's not uncommon for people to put what we call the trinity, which is cut up onion, bell pepper, and celery. Now I don't do this in my lima beans, but I do that in my red beans when I make red beans and rice. But in here, it's because we're doing a simple frugal meal from our food pantry. We've got our lima beans, we've got our ham, we've got a little bit of pepper, and a little bit of garlic. Now we've got it to a boil, and I'm going to add a good sized bay leaf. And stir that in. Now we're going to turn it down so that it, it will drop to a simmer, and we're just going to let it cook for, it'll take several hours. Now I can look at this and tell that it's already going to need some more liquid somewhere through the process of cooking. Um, a, a couple of things that I wanted to tell you about this. Now I had the ham that, uh, that I had canned and also the ham broth that I had canned from a ham bone. But if you don't have those, you can certainly just use uh, chicken broth for your liquid and add the addition of ham to season it. So what I'm going to do though is I need to add more liquid instead of adding more ham broth because that is plenty to season with and I don't want to over salt it. I will just add 
water and to, to keep it up to where it needs to be and it'll take like I said several hours on simmer you're just going to want to stop occasionally and check it stir it and then uh, just keep a watch on it and when your uh, beans are good and soft some people like to go a little past what we do and they want them almost to a pasty point um, I prefer to stop the cooking process right before that, but it's just whatever that you prefer. Okay, so we've got these on a very, very low point on the stove, and we're going to put the lid on, and we're just going to let them cook. And I'll be back with you in just a little bit, and I'm going to show you how I make my cornbread. We are about 30 minutes away from the lima beans being done. So um, I need to go ahead and get started with my cornbread. So I've already preheated my oven to 425. Now, I did do a taste test on my lima beans just a little bit ago, and they were plenty salty just from the ham. So I'm glad that I didn't add any salt. So that's something that you just want to be aware of and make sure that um, you adjust your salt accordingly. But I didn't have to um, add any with my ham. Okay, so to make your cornbread, of course, I make my cornbread in a cast iron skillet. And what I do is I actually put about a cup and a half of Bob's Red Mill medium grind stone ground cornmeal and about a half a cup of, um, I actually use uh, King Arthur unbleached non-GMO flour. Okay, so I've put this in my bowl and I've, and I've added a teaspoon of salt and two good teaspoons of bacon powder. Okay, and so I'm just going to blend these up a little bit, make sure that I blend all my dry ingredients really, really well. Now, I don't use vegetable oils except for avocado oil or um, olive oil, and I use olive oil very sparingly when it comes to heat. So what I'm going to do here, we have to add a fat. So we're going to... Um, cut in just like we would with biscuits I'm gonna cut in some lard and I've got about a tablespoon of lard you can just kind of wing it but I've got about a tablespoon of lard okay now I'm gonna show you a trick that my aunt taught me years and years ago rather than breaking your egg and uh, blending it or mixing it in with your milk, she actually would break her egg into her meal and just uh, beat it right there. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna reach over and I got one of my great fresh eggs. And I'm just gonna drop it right here in the middle of the meal. And I'll be right back because I'm gonna drop this in my compost bucket. And what she would do is she would just beat the egg right there in the well of her meal. And then she would blend it just like she did her lard. She would just blend it in really, really good with her meal. Okay, now I've got about three-fourths of a cup of of my good fresh raw milk here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna pour it all in at one time. I'm actually gonna pour in a little and incorporate because I don't wanna get it too, too wet. I want it probably somewhere close to pancake batter or a little bit thicker. Okay, this is about the consistency that I want, and I didn't realize when I picked up this bowl, it's the same color as the cornmeal. But um, it's, it's like a thick pancake batter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my cast iron skillet on, on top of the stove. A lot of people will actually put theirs in their preheated stove, in their preheated oven, but I'm gonna turn it on on top, and I'm gonna show you a trick that I use to help uh, turn out a crispier crust on your cornbread. So I put in about a heaping tablespoon of lard. Uh, like I said before, I, I don't use vegetable oils. I use lard or I use my ghee or on occasion I will use uh, 
depending on what it's for. Uh, my cuckoo clock. I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> um, occasionally I'll use olive oil or avocado oil. Okay, so but we're going to melt this down. And I have, my, my skillets are very, very well seasoned. And the best thing for a cast iron skillet is to use it. Now, you wanna, uh, you wanna uh, be very careful about using it for boiling stuff in or very wet, wet dishes like soups and stuff. But if you use it um, just for like your cornbread to fry things in or bake things in, uh, I'm, I bake a, oh a goodness, a delicious, pineapple upside down cake that's done in the cast iron skillet. I'll do that sometime for you and, and take you along. But um, they, they're very easy once you get them seasoned to keep them that way if you just take a little, a little care and a little maintenance with them. Okay, so you see that that's melted. And it's pretty warm. But what I'm going to do is I've got a little bit of, of my cornmeal here, not, not the mix, not with the flour and stuff in it, but just the cornmeal. And I'm going to sprinkle it in this hot lard, like that. And as soon as I get it sprinkled in, though, then I'm going to turn my fire off a little bit more. Okay. And then we are going to actually put our batter into the hot skillet with that layer of cornmeal. And that's going to help give you a crispy bottom, which will actually be the top if you turn it out on a plate. And you want a, 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 a good hot oven. Like I said, I had mine preheated to 425 degrees. There we go. Now, I, I used to always buy a cornmeal mix. Now, I like my cornbread kind of thin. We do. Our family likes it kind of thin. So we're going to spread it out like that. Now I'm going to shake it down just a little bit and I'm going to put it in this hot oven and you're just going to keep a watch on it somewhere around uh, 20 minutes uh, you just want to check it depending on your oven um, but you want it to have a moderately brown top and a good crispy uh, good good brown bottom so but we'll be back with you in just a little bit and I'll show you the cornbread and our completed lima beans well, we have a wonderful meal placed on the table for my family that actually came from my food storage pantry. So what we're about to do is we're going to say the blessing, we're going to cut the cornbread, and we're going to get started eating. But I want to remind you of this. Don't ever forget that your Heavenly Father loves you. And I'll see you on the next video. God bless.